Hello and welcome to the Union Connection Cable Channel 14. Union County is very rich in historic heritage and our county holds many historic landmarks. In December of 2011, those landmarks took the spotlight as the Union County Historic Trail was officially opened. Colonel William Jack Whitener, President Emeritus of the Union County Historical Society, said, it has been a dream of the Historical Society for a long time to have a historic trail across Union County. That dream became a reality. Mayor Harold Thompson said the trail will help tell the great Union County story. The historic trail begins just inside Lawrence County and runs east of Monarch and includes 23 sites. Each site is marked with a sign in the shape of Union County with the name of the site and a number that corresponds to its location on the map contained in the historic trail brochure. We here at the Union Connection Cable Channel 14, along with the Union County Tourism Commission Executive Director Will Boyles, are going to visit some of these sites and take you on a guided tour. Today's journey includes the Union County Museum and the Cross Keys House. We hope you enjoy the visit and that you learn about some of the historic roots of Union County. Let's get started with our first stop. Okay, we're over here at the Union County Museum in historic Main Street, Union, South Carolina, and I'm here with the Executive Director, Ms. Ola Jean Kelly. And if you want to know anything about the museum or the history of Union County, this lady right here is the one you need to talk with. Um, we're going to speak with her today, talk about some of the things going on in the museum recently, some things from years past, and we're just going to kind of get her story and see how, get her take on it and see how things are going here in Union at the museum. Um, Miss Ola Jean, tell me about your background and just your background in general, your background with the museum and with the Historic Society. Well, actually, Melissa, my, my training is in banking. I was a banker for 40 years. Uh, I had to retire because of an illness, and then several years later, this job came open. So it's sort of on-the-job training, uh, but I have been here eight years now, be eight years in, in uh, May. Absolutely love it, uh, learning as I go. Okay, tell us about the history and background of the museum itself. Well, in 1900, uh, Mrs. Clifford, Mrs. B.G. Clifford, who with her husband operated a very exclusive girls' school here, the Clifford Female Seminary, uh, heard about an exposition that was going to take place in Charleston, South Carolina in 1901. She gathered seven of her friends from over the county, uh, all over Union County, and together they gathered 450 artifacts and put them on display for the entire year of 1901. And the Charleston newspapers reported that Union County was light years ahead of other communities in historic preservation. Of course, Mrs. Clifford's idea was to start a museum in Union. But the economy being what it was, that didn't happen until 1976 when the Historical Society was, was formed. Uh, and shortly thereafter, uh, American Federal gave us space on the top floor of their building. That's the building at the other end of Maine where the county offices are. That room was not finished. But volunteers and cedar workers completed the uh, room, and our, dis our, um, excuse me, our collection was put on display there, and we stayed there until early 2000 when the building was sold, and the new owner uh, required rent, which we didn't have. And so our entire collection was, was um, packed up, moved into storage. The city and county pitched in to help us. And then we over uh, opened in this location in 2004. Uh, the city and county fully support us, and we're very grateful for that. Now, I remember when that happened, I think we were here kind of for the unveiling or grand opening, and you were just amazed to have all this space. And now we're out of space, <laughs> and we're looking for space. In fact, we've had to curtail accepting gifts, which is not a good thing, but we have no place to put them. In fact, uh, we have to rotate our collection, M Melissa. We have special displays. We have rotation displays, for instance. In June and July, we do um, wedding garments. Our oldest dress is 1823, and we have father of the bride, mother of the groom, a flower girl. Uh, the center point for the last uh, couple years has been a wedding dress that was worn by seven brides. Four were sisters, uh, one was a sister-in-law, and two were friends. And the wonderful thing about that dress was, well, there were two wonderful things. First of all, the first bride made it, and each bride added to it, made some alteration in it. 
and none of the seven marriages ended in divorce. Now, talking about the items here in the museum, tell me how the items come to you. Do you solicit and advertise wanting items? People just bring them to you? Tell me about that. Everything you see in the museum, with exception of the cannon at the front door, has been donated. We have no funds for acquisition. Uh, to, to be accepted in the museum, it has to be a Union County item because this is the Union County Museum. Uh, it has to be in a displayable condition. We certainly cannot think, accept things we can't display because we'd have to store them and we don't have storage room. And it cannot be a duplicate because the same issue, the lack of storage space. But we try to showcase Union County uh, and to shed a spotlight on Union County that's in a positive way and not in a negative way. Now, you did mention the lack of space. How long does a particular item stay out on its display and what do you do with it when you move it? Uh, everything in this museum has a number and every cupboard and every shelf has a number. And thanks to my two wonderful assistants, Dale and Celeste, uh, we can tell you at any moment where anything is. But that brings up what do we do with it when we move something. That record has, has to be accessed and the location has to be changed. Uh, now, we do have some displays that are permanent. They probably will never be moved because of their size and the difficulty in moving them. I talked about the wedding dress display, which is a rotating display. Uh, very shortly, uh, probably in a couple or three months, we're going to have a uh, local pottery collector is going to, let a, going to share his collection with us. It will be Union County Pottery, Edgefield Pottery. Edgefield was the matrix of South Carolina pottery. And there will be some Catawba Valley, which is North Carolina pottery. You might remember a couple years ago, we did a salute to the T-Model on its 100th anniversary. We had the T-Model parked on a flatbed truck out, out front and then had all the accoutrements in here. Uh, from the mid-November till January, we have unique and unusual toys. Uh, we've just done a rotation of the cabinet that's behind you. Uh, Mr. Hydric Kirby uh, had a um, store over on Fike Avenue and Union Mill. It was called Kirby's Mineral Products. And I remember one of his mineral products that I would love to have a case of right now. Uh, if you've ever stuck a paper clip or a staple in your finger or had a paper cut, you know how sore it gets. Well, he had something in a bottle that you could put on that cut and it went away. <laughs> I'd love to have some of that. But we have a small display for him right now. Um, and uh, some things have to be taken down to rest. We have some textiles that we're going to have to take down and let, I mean, when, when a a garment or a, a bed cover is 160 years old, it can't keep hanging, that puts a stress on it. So uh, we're learning how to take care of our collection. We got a wonderful grant, an education grant from Tempkin. Uh, with that money, we were able to hire an archivist and she came in and told us what we needed to be doing and showed us how to do it and told us what to do it with. So we're, we're doing all that now. Now I understand you have lots of visitors that come to the museum. How many would you say come annually? probably between 3,500 and 4,000 sign the guest book. We have a little difficulty getting folk to sign the guest book because they think, a telemarketer's gonna call me. So we assure them that we do not sell that book to telemarketers and if anybody calls you and says it's us, say no, you're not, and hang up on them. Now tell me some of the places I understand. Last time I was in here, you telling me people come from all over, it's not just locally. Oh my gracious, no, last week alone we had six other states and yesterday we had three. Um, most of those are doing genealogical research. Um, we've had genealogical researchers from two foreign countries. We have a young man who lives in Canada and he comes every two or three years and stays a month. He's related to Haki Mosley. Haki Mosley was our well-known revolutionary blacksmith who was a bosom buddy of Dr. Jean-Baptiste Burrell who was the Marquis de Lafayette's personal physician and Dr. Burrell's settling union. In fact, his great-great-great-granddaughter was here yesterday from Alabama and the showed her here and took her out to our Cross Keys house. Well, I tell you, we must have an amazing museum for people to come from all over these faraway places to come. And I, if you've never been here, you really need to check it out because it is just amazing what Miss Ola Jean and the Historical Society has done with this place. Is there anything particular that you have special in here going on this month? Well, uh, we just did a display of the items that were removed in November from the cornerstone, the 100-year-old cornerstone at the courthouse. Uh, we do have those in a, a separate cabinet, and that will probably be on display for a couple months. Uh, when the pottery exhibit comes in, we'll have to do a whole lot of moving. <laughs> and 
I know there's a lot of textiles that's been through Union County, and you have a special section devoted to textiles. Now, that kind of interests me because I worked in textiles at one time. My daddy worked in textiles. My grandparents worked in textiles. So Union County is full of textile history, and I think that's something I think that you keep displayed year-round. Yes, we have a permanent room for uh, textiles. I'd like to tell you an interesting story. I've been assisting a young man who is writing a thesis for his college course on textiles in Union County. And he's been coming to the museum, I think yesterday was his fourth or fifth treatment, uh, trip. We have shared um, photographs. We have a wonderful archives of photographs uh, of the different mill villages uh, and shared what's in our, our textile collection and assisted him in writing that. And we're expecting an A double plus on that report. Well, I tell you, you've got a lot of stuff textiles. I've looked the last time I was here and Anything you want to know about textiles in Union County, Miss Ologene has it here. And you also have a military section. Tell me about that. We have uh, objects from before the uh, Revolution, during the Revolution, and through Vietnam. We have uniforms, we have flags, we have swords, we have bayonets, everything that would be used in a war. Uh, in our military collection or section, perhaps the most significant piece is the secession table. Benjamin Franklin Arthur was the clerk of the secession. He was from Union, and it was his table that was used in Charleston on December 20th, 1860, uh, to draw up and sign the, the uh, secession ordinance. So we have that table. Only three flags from Union survived the war between the states. Uh, we have two of those. Uh, we have a list, uh, a map of the revolutionary battles and skirmishes fought in Union County. Uh, Melissa, I was educated in the Union County schools and had wonderful teachers, but for some reason I grew up thinking that the American Revolution was one in uh, the North. And you can imagine my surprise when an attorney from the state of Oregon called me one day and she said, I'm writing a, a book on the American Revolution in the South Carolina backcountry. By the way, you do know it was one in the South Carolina backcountry. And after stuttering, I said, well, as a matter of fact, I didn't. But she's convinced me. And, uh, of course, one of the most famous battles was fought right here in Union County at the Blackstock Plantation. Okay, just there's so much to choose from in here, but since we're standing by this thing right here, I'm going to get Miss Ologene to tell us about this table behind us and what we have on it and the history behind it. Okay. Um, in another generation, many women, if not most, maybe all, had wonderful needle skills. Uh, this is a blanket chest was given to us, and we have some quilts in there. They're so fragile, I won't try to get them out. But we have here a picture of a quilting bee at the, Carlisle, the old Carlisle School, and we have a sheet of paper and a pencil in here because we're trying to identify all those ladies who were there uh, quilting. But I'm especially proud of this piece right here. It's a 1929 handmade coverlet. It was made, made by Miss Cicely Savage from Santuck. It's called Hand Drawn Entirely by Hand. Uh, we had a visitor from the state of Pennsylvania who was Mrs. Savage's great grandson. And he said when he was a young man, he remembered grandmother made all her children something special for Christmas. And as far as he knows, this is the only surviving piece. All those children are gone now. Uh, he drove all the way from Pennsylvania just to see grandma's coverlet. Now tell me that's about this little rocking chair. I am been admiring it. I like that. All right, this little rocking chair is a child's toy. And it came out of our Cross Keys house, which is the historic house, which the Historical Society uh, owns and displays. And I want to put in a plug for our Living History Event 5, which will take place um, April 28th and 29th, which is a Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we will be there on Saturday from 10 to 5 and Sunday from 10 to 4. Last year, we had 124 reenactors to come and help us uh, uh, remember the visit of President Jefferson Davis. And uh, we had about 1,000 visitors. So it was a busy weekend. Now, if someone wants to come in and visit the museum, do they need to make an appointment or just come when they want and also tell us when it's open to the public? We're open three and a half days a week. We're here Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from 9 until 4, and on Saturday from 2 until 5. If you just want to come in and visit the museum, you're welcome to drop in anytime we're open. If you want a tour, you need to call ahead to make sure that uh, somebody's going to be available to do a tour. If we're tied up doing genealogical research or somebody's out, uh, something like that. And if you want to bring a group, we do like advance notice on that. Well, not too long ago, we did two pieces, I think, with Miss Ola Jean. We did a piece 
where we went through just about everything in this museum and she told the background of everything in here. And she is very good at that. I think she has those DVDs for sale if anyone out there is interested. Um, and from time to time, we always come back and update with Miss Ola Jean and see what news she has in store. Um, but it was good to talk with you today. We're going to take a look around at just some of the artifacts you have in here, and it's good to talk with you. And Thank you. Thank you so much, Melissa. I appreciate it. And if I can um, tell you about anything, you know I'd love to tell you about something. Thank you for well, coming. I tell you, folks, I have never met anyone that knows history like this lady. And when she told me she's only been here eight years, that shocked me because you would think she'd been here for 28 years, as much as she knows. But uh, it's always good to see you, and enjoy your day, Miss Ology. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Melissa.
right, now that you've had a chance to look around the museum, we're going to talk to Miss Ola Jean before we leave here today. And tell us how this historic trail got started. It was the brainchild, a collaborative e effort between the Historical Society and the Union County Tourism Commission. Uh, it's by no means comprehensive because there were a lot of beautiful places that are not owned here. But this is sort of a tourist guide to historic places in Union. Uh, every place that's on the brochure has a sign outside. And incidentally, the signs are in the shape of Union County. And it has the number uh, that co uh, corresponds with what's on the guide. And the complete address is there. And uh, the information tells you whether or not this uh, particular location is open to the public or if it's by appointment only. Now, how were the different places chosen to be part of this, the whole trail? That was a committee um, a project. Uh, it was selected by the committee. And if they want to, anybody out there wants to get a brochure and look at the places and so they know what, where each marker is where, how do they go about getting a brochure? Where are they located? Uh, we have them here in the museum. Uh, they're in the Chamber of Commerce office, and uh, we dropped off a few at the Union, Union County Carnegie Library. And I understand that this has been a dream for many years to come for this thing to get open. How did y'all feel when it became a reality? It was a wonderful day. Uh, we inaugurated the trail on November 1st. Uh, it was especially dear to the heart of Colonel uh, William Whitener, Jack Whitener, uh, and he made the official opening right out in front of the museum. Well, I tell you, we're looking forward to showing you just bits and pieces of this trail. And like I say, we're going to take tours to several places. We may not hit them all, but we're going to show you just a small guided tour of them all. But if you want to see them in person, come pick you up a brochure. It's a beautiful brochure. And who has a part in making these? Uh, again, it was a collaborative effort. The, the Historical Society paid for the brochures, and the Tourism Commission paid for the signs. But if you, you haven't gotten one of these, you need to check it out. It's beautiful. It's got a whole fold-out thing here, and it tells you every place to go, just a little brief history about it, and the exact address, as she said. And like I say, Union County has a lot of historic roots, so you need to take part and kind of get a history lesson like I have here today. Absolutely. Thank you, Melissa.